Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the Chin Up Show. Today is episode number 21. Wow, you know 21, like the age 21 is when you mature and uh, when you're able to vote. Of course, today in Malaysia, you can vote at 18. Uh, but 21 has always been a special number and I believe that it will be a special number for us even today. Uh, so on behalf of my team and I, I want to welcome all of you, those who are regular to the Chin Up Show. Uh, as well as those who are new, brand new to us. Uh, we pray that you will be blessed in the time that we will have together. Now, of course, you can see on my left, your right, is Elvin. We call him Pastor Elvin as he serves as a pastor for XPJ. Uh, and I thought he should just join me from the get-go. Hi, Elvin. Morning. Hi, morning, Pastor. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, definitely. We're going to talk to you a little bit uh, more about uh, autism. Uh, Elvin, because uh, it was just recently World Autism Day. Was it World Autism Day? How do you say it? Yeah, it was uh, World Autism Awareness Day, okay. Pastor, on the 2nd of April. Autism Awareness Day on yeah. the 2nd of April. Uh, so I guess uh, the whole month of April is dedicated uh, to uh, autism yes, awareness. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but I'm just going to give a few updates, uh, Elvin, and uh, sometimes I'm going to ask you uh, about these updates uh, and see uh, what you have to say about it. Sure, uh, but it's been a really, really uh, good past week. Um, we especially uh, were able to celebrate Good Friday. Yeah. Uh, and Easter yeah. Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Elvin, uh, you were there, right, for both events? Uh, yes, I was there for both events. Uh, I think Good Friday was very encouraging. I mean, we had our traditional, I mean, use tradition because we practice that every Good Friday where we come together. We hear powerful testimony. Because it was also the last day of uh, U-turn. Yes. And our 21 day of prayer and fast. Yeah. And uh, everybody was uh, excited to, of course, uh, you know, close the U-turn with a celebration on Good Friday. Yeah. And also there were many testimonies. Yeah, there were many testimonies. And I think Pastor Senra preached a really powerful yes, word. And a lot of people were really blessed by it. So it was really good, Good Friday. Yeah, so good. Uh, and, uh, you know, talking about testimonies, uh, I have a few uh, and I won't be able to share all of it uh, today, uh, but maybe one or two. Um, we've been praying for uh, a field for DVFC, okay. DVFA, because it's good that uh, our football academy actually has its own field. Um, you know, by the grace of God, all these years we've uh, rented fields, and uh, some were really good, some were not so good, but, uh, you know, it's always very challenging. Uh, because sometimes uh, the day we want to rent it, uh, they're not available uh, or they have rented it to someone else uh, or they're closed for renovations, whatever it is. Uh, and so it's been a dream the past maybe five, seven years uh, to have our own field. And so we've been praying, 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 praying. Uh, of course, there are some pieces of land here and there, uh, some possibilities and probabilities, but they're always too far. And of course, the further it is from Subang Jaya, the cheaper it will be. Uh, but we've been praying for Subang because uh, we um, especially reach out to marginalized yeah. uh, children. Yeah. And every session of academy that we have, we sponsor about 40 to 50 of these young people yeah. uh, from uh, you know the uh, poorer backgrounds. And uh, we will sponsor uh, even not just their fees, but all the way even to their jerseys uh, and, uh, you know, the whole kit, uh, just to make them uh, feel, uh, you know, a, a sense of pride. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so a lot of money goes into that. Uh, and thank God for the sponsors. And X Church is the biggest sponsor thus far. Yeah. Uh, so we are thankful. Uh, but the field, coming back to the field again, uh, you know, uh, land is very expensive in Subak. Uh, but recently, uh, because one of our prayer during the 31 days uh, of U-turn uh, was that Lord opened the door for us. So uh, I think it was uh, a day before uh, U-turn ended, um, our coach, Albert, Albert Lau, uh, he got a text wow. from uh, an officer uh, of the local council. Uh, we call it MBSJ or Majlis Banda Subang Jaya, mm. uh, the local council, one of the officers, uh, quite a key person uh, in the local council. Uh, he has already quite good favor 
and working relationship with us, with uh, AYA, with the DVFA. Uh, so he wrote in uh, to Albert to say, uh, would you like to consider, consider this uh, piece of land? It's already a public field uh, and uh, not very good condition, not uh, the FIFA size, uh, slightly smaller, maybe by 20% uh, smaller, so yeah. it's about 80% uh, the size. Uh, and uh, it's not utilized as often. Uh, and uh, now I think there, there's some sort of a trend going on with local councils all around Malaysia, whereby I think they like to lease out uh, their property and their land, their fields, uh, in this case, a football field in Subang Jaya, to uh, organizations or even corporate companies whereby uh, we can maintain it for them. Wow. Uh, and still uh, open it up for the use of the public. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this field was made available to us. Uh, of course, we still have to write in, we still have to make our proposal. They still have to consider whether our proposal is a good one, whether it still uh, has the community in mind uh, and whether we can still, you know, um, uh, make money, uh, you know, uh, in uh, renting it out uh, to different ones. So anyway, it's very close by uh, to our office. Yes. Uh, it's in the USJ uh, one area. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, Albert got to meet them, uh, this particular officer and also another person from MBSJ. And they like us. They like us because we're not just any uh, football academy. We're a football academy that cares for the poor uh, and has been doing it for the past maybe eight, to 10 years. Uh, and so they say, we like you, we like how you do things. Uh, and so uh, why don't you go ahead and write the proposal? And of course, we also have to raise up money because we're going to have to change the grass. Yeah, uh, It can't just be cow grass because yeah. when it rains, there are like puddles of water, mud. So we are probably going to have to change it to a astro turf kind mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, Albert's calculation is that it will probably cost us 1.2 million ringgit. Wow. And so we're going to have to pray now that next uh, <laughs> uh, prayer item that the Lord will provide yeah. for us uh, and you know, touch the heart of a businessman or a corporation or just somebody uh, that uh, not only has the money but also has the vision to help young people like we do. Uh, so it's very exciting because uh, money is one thing, right? But I think money is easier to find than land. Yes especially in Subang Jaya. Yeah, that's so right. that's one testimony. And another testimony is, uh, you know, I've been praying for this particular renovation of my house. It's almost completed. I call it cabin. Mm. Uh, I affectionately call it the cabin. Uh, and it's at the back of my house. Uh, and uh, so 95% done, 5% uh, more to go. Uh, so probably in the next three weeks to four weeks, it should be done. Uh, but, you know, uh, I need money to pay the final bill. Uh, and um, so I've been praying. So 21 days of prayer, um, asking the Lord to help me. He's already helped me with uh, more than half of the bill. So by the grace of God, you know, I've been able to pay that. Uh, so this is the final bill. It hasn't come yet, but I'm expecting it to come within the next few weeks. Uh, and so I'm praying, 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 and asking God, God to supply. Uh, but the beautiful thing is that uh, there was a man, there is a man uh, who has it on his mind, his heart, to actually help me with that bill. Wow. Uh, and uh, yet he himself was stuck because he had some investments uh, that didn't really go through the way he expected it. Mm. For about a year, year and a half, it hasn't seen any movements. And so this is a good principle I'm learning that when you are praying for a need that you have, but God has put it on the heart of someone else to help you provide for that need, God will also help that person yeah. when you're praying for yourself yeah. uh, because God is going to choose that man or that woman to help with that need. So what has happened is, uh, and this is just, uh, you know, really, really good uh, uh, update uh, that is recent, that uh, as I was speaking uh, to this person recently, the person said, I have it on my heart to help you, but I was stuck. And not just stuck recently, I've been stuck for a year more or more. Uh, and uh, there are, I think uh, he said there are, there are three pieces of land that he needed to sell. Uh, and uh, he said, uh, Kenneth, uh, I kid you not, but in this just one month, just this last one month, uh, two uh, interested parties came to me wow. to ask about two pieces of land. And he said, just one after the other, uh, the interests turned into investment. Wow. Uh, and he said, uh, just one after the other, I was able to sell 
the land. So it's during the U-turn period that uh, there was a breakthrough. And now he says, because I'm receiving these funds, I want to be able to help you. And he gave me a date. He says, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a check by this date. It's, wow. it's a date in this month of April. And so I, I just went home, you know, giving thanks to God, praising Him wow. uh, for how He's supplying my need uh, and uh, how He has been so faithful during the 21 uh, days. But it's not only blessed me, it's blessed somebody who wants to bless me. Amen. So this is a principle, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, even the Bible says how uh, I will bless those who bless you. Uh, the Bible uh, promises uh, that. So, uh, praise God for uh, faith. Praise God for uh, God's faithfulness. Praise God for the 21 days. Praise God for U-turn. Yeah. And it all went well. I can't even say that I fasted really well uh, this year. I think once or twice I kind of broke my own uh, 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 fast at, at a time that I, uh, you, know, uh, you know, should have kept to it. But, uh, you know, there were different circumstances so I had to break it and I kind of sort of like made it up the next day. You know, it, it, was, it was a little bit of, of messy uh, this year. But you know, God knows. Amen. God knows. Yeah. God understands. God loves us. Yeah. Uh, fasting shouldn't be legalistic. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't be, you know, just because I missed it, God hates me now. No, yeah. no, yeah. no. God just wants to see you try. God just wants to see how much you want this. And, and God wants our eyes to continue to focus yeah. on Him, not the fast. Yeah. Not the success of the fast, but on the, the goodness of our God. Uh, and so, uh, even though my fast was not perfect, God is perfect. Mm. Praise the Lord. It's Amen. Uh, so, wonderful. I want to say one or two more things. Uh, and uh, I want to talk about Padu. Uh, it's a big thing to me uh, and my wife because the deadline was last Sunday. Yes. Uh, and Padu in Malay is Pangkalan Data Utama. And it's some sort of a central data system that Malaysia is implementing. And last Sunday, uh, the 31st of March, was the last day. In fact, if you go in now, it says that you can't register anymore. So I, I, maybe another day they'll open up again. Uh, and I was led by the Holy Spirit to do this because, uh, you, you know, in my position of being a director of many of our uh, non-profit organizations and our social organizations, um, I feel, or at least I've, I felt led, uh, with a thought that in the future, any dealings with the government will have them asking that question. Yeah. Have you registered with Padu? Yeah. And that could be uh, the way forward or the way backward yeah. for any application. And I also remembered uh, that as, uh, as Linets, the organization that we have started uh, that is dedicated to suicide prevention and mental health care, uh, they are actually applying for a grant from the government. Mm. And of course, I sit as a leader, my wife sits as a, as a leader, uh, Dr. Jill. In fact, I, in fact, I wrote to Dr. Jill and said, have you registered? Because I felt the Lord saying to me, this is going to be a key point with the government in the future mm. moving forward. And so she said, okay, Pastor, you know, because you know, there's quite a few personal questions there that many of us don't feel comfortable answering. Yeah. They even ask you for your bank account uh, number. Mm. Uh, and so I think a lot of us are not comfortable with that. But then, you know, it's good that when you're not comfortable with some things, that the Lord gives you yeah. that conviction. Yeah. I, I was not even comfortable taking uh, the injection uh, for, you know, remember the COVID. whole uh, COVID-19, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it again? A vaccine. The, the vaccine. Uh, I was not comfortable with that. Uh, then my wife and I prayed and the Lord led us to do it. Mm. So I, I was late by maybe about nine months mm. to do it because I wanted to hear from God. And God said to me, Kenneth, uh, to be able to continue to do the ministry that I called you to do, I, I want you to take it and I will protect you just like the Bible said, uh, if those of you take anything deadly mm. into your body, you will by no means be hurt. Yeah. So I took that, I think that, that scripture is found in Mark 16, verse 17 yeah. you know, or 18. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, I, I, sometimes we just need to hear from the Lord yeah. and no matter how many voices out there say no, don't do it or you know, whatever it is so uh, did you? were you able to sign up for Padu? Uh, I would <laughs> like to say I did uh, uh, but unfortunately okay. I think uh, we were a little bit busy so okay. we didn't had a chance to okay. kind of look into it Pastor All right. yeah. so, <laughs> so I'll so, probably have to wait for the next round but I'm guessing that you and a couple of millions of people uh, have not and, and, and you know naturally yeah. It's just scary yeah, yeah. to give 
uh, the government so much information. Yeah. So anyway, I prayed about it and I was led by the Lord. So, you know, I'm not going to judge anybody yeah, who, yeah, that's who didn't person. do it because there, there are reasons why we don't. Yeah. Um, but you will see, right, in the future, how I think it will start to be uh, criteria. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, right Yeah, even though uh, the government said it's not law yet. Yeah. It's not law. You don't uh, have to do it uh, by law. Yeah. As in, like, we won't take you to court, etc. Uh, but I think they're serious about it. So to me, it, it, when I look at Luke chapter 2, it almost seems like the time when Caesar Augustus mm-hmm. uh, decreed that yeah. the whole world should be registered. And uh, of course, Joseph and Mary went to be registered, but she was already fully pregnant. Yeah. And while they went to be registered, you know, she gave birth uh, in a manger. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what God will do with this. But it was a big deal. Yeah. Because uh, I was stuck a few times, Elvin, because for many people who, who have a salary, EPF, uh, Soxo, all those kind of things, uh, it's probably going to be easier. For me, without a salary, yeah. uh, I haven't gotten a salary for almost 30 years now. And without that, I don't have EPF, I don't have Soxo, I don't have all these things that the, that the world says is important for your future. Uh, I just have God uh, and God's word to me that I'm not to take a salary yeah. uh, and I'm to trust Him. Uh, and so, Elvin, for the first time ever, I had to actually choose uh, a, a category there that says Pasara. Mm. Means I have retired yeah. at 53 years old. Yeah. And because I put that, and, and of course, I, the whole church knows I'm retired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I wish I could have used something else, but I had to put a company's name, uh, who's, who's the one that hires me, what's my salary, what's, you know, all that. And so I don't have all that. So it was a little bit, like surreal, no, Elvin, to actually put there retired. And because I put there retired, I didn't have to fill up everything else. Yeah. Except that they also said, okay, you're retiree, uh, you're retired, uh, uh, but do you have any side income? Uh, and I had to put there that, you know, the NGO pays yeah, yeah, me something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I even had to say, uh, I got a loan uh, because uh, someone donated to me money to yeah. build my house. So I don't want them to go into my uh, 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 bank account statement and go like, how did this 100,000 ringgit come in, mm. uh, you know, and what do you use it for? So I had to say, you know. So it, it, it took me double the time okay. <laughs> to fill up Padu. Uh, my wife just, you know, uh, did it uh, in half the time. Anyway, so uh, to all of you out there, uh, uh, you know, uh, I hope that you are also led by the Lord. Uh, whether to do it or not. And uh, the next time it happens, uh, you know, uh, let's just uh, see what the Lord says to you. But I think uh, it's uh, good to be able uh, to just, you know, align yourself with whatever happens with the with the government and to see where that goes. But, you know, do it out of peace yeah. in your heart uh, for what the Lord has in store. Uh, I want to say one more thing before I move on, Elvin, uh, to autism focus. Yeah, sure, uh, that uh, we are going to have our campus conference next week. And I believe it starts on Thursday next week. Okay? Yes. It's the Hari Raya holidays. Yes. Okay, the Raya holidays, uh, I think, starts in, uh, in, Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday. Uh, so, Raya starts 10th. Uh, of uh, April, uh, but the conference uh, starts on the 11th. Yes, yes. I think uh, Pastor Steven will be able Pastor to share Steven, a about There's it, about so. 150 signups. Yes, in total, including volunteers. 150. Yeah, 150. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which was the number that we were aiming for. Yeah. Cool. Are we still open for others to join in or not? It's closed. Case by case basis, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. So case by case basis, if you're hearing me saying this, it's going to be such an awesome a campus conference. Yeah, I believe is. in it. I know it's going to be great. I know that uh, lives are going to be touched and Amen. transformed. I know that we're going to hear things uh, downloaded from heaven. Uh, Pastor Stephen is going to be one of the speakers as well. Uh, and we're going to even have a panel uh, talking about relationships, relationships. right? Oh, that's a, a big, line. Yeah, that sounds interesting, big topic, also. Elvin. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> those of us who, have, who are married now, once upon a time, uh, had boy-girl relationship <laughs> issues as well. We had questions. Yeah. We are now married and uh, maybe there are still questions. I don't know. Uh, uh, why did I get married? No, no. Don't ask those kind of questions. Too bad, okay? Uh, you, you're married. Make the best out of your marriage. Amen. Uh, 
but uh, Pastor Stephen, uh, anything else you want to say about the conference? Where is it going to be held? It's going to be at El Sanctuary, Malacca. El Sanctuary, Malacca. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're going back to Malacca. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's going to be two nights, three days. Is that right? Yeah. Three days, two nights from okay. Thursday all the way to Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So look forward to that. And again, you heard it here. Case by case basis, if you have uh, not been able to sign up but you want to, uh, who do they contact, Elvin? Uh, sorry, uh, Stephen? They can reach out to their church plan reps okay. or their CPCs and okay. we will be in touch. Church plan reps, CPCs, uh, and uh, tell them your interest, uh, beg them, give them uh, money up front. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, but how if they're not from X Church? If they're not from X Church, uh, they can feel free to reach out to our social media pages. Okay. So, uh, X Campus My, A C T S C A M P U S M Y. So, they can reach out there and drop us a message. X Campus My. Yeah. Okay. So, you heard it here. And uh, if you're not going, pray for us. Uh, to have a God time. Not just a good time, but a God time. Okay. Praise the Lord. This is awesome. Uh, Alvin King. Okay, Master. Uh, leader of Timmy, the organization that we started by the grace of God yeah. uh, that is dedicated to children with special needs yeah. and also to helping parents yeah. and families. Because as we know here, it's not just one child's problem yeah. or should I say challenge? Yeah. It is the whole family. Yeah. Uh, parents have got concerns, even worries. Yeah. Uh, and um, and uh, Timmy, as the organization, uh, the not-for-profit organization, was started uh, to be of practical yeah. support yeah. Uh, to these precious people. Tell us about uh, the day. It's uh, April the 2nd. It's World Autism Awareness Day, yes. right? So every uh, 2nd of April, uh, the world celebrates uh, Autism Awareness Day. And uh, I mean, we don't, we, they don't just limit, limit it to a day. They, we actually take the whole month right. uh, to talk about autism. Right. Uh, and uh, you will see different organizations. You know, I saw Say did an article on it. Right. Uh, different people are you know, doing different things so that we can have a little bit more awareness and understanding. Uh, because autism is, uh, and special needs in general is all considered a, um, a, a not visible disability. Meaning mm. you can't really see it. You sure. know? I mean, it's easier when you can see a visible disability. If you know someone's deaf or yeah. blind or right. you know, uh, who needs a, a wheelchair, it's obvious. And automatically, I think when we can see it, uh, we automatically understand or mm. we automatically come to a place of compassion. Mm. Uh, but when you talk about special needs or autism uh, per se, Pastor, it's, you can't really see it. You know, you only see like, oh, someone's weird. Yeah. Uh, and uh, having more awareness helps or us just, to... Or just overactive. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, so having more awareness helps us to have more understanding. And yeah. when we understand a little bit, uh, we can have more compassion. Yes. That's generally uh, yes. the whole idea of it. Uh, and uh, even in Malaysia, Pastor, it is still not as... I mean... The wonderful thing is that we have come a long way, mm. so there's a lot more awareness, yeah. uh, but still not enough. Uh, and it could be because of uh, the way we perceive uh, uh, special needs mm. uh, or the way we perceive uh, autism. Uh, you know, it's still seen as a taboo topic. Mm. Uh, it's still seen as an illness. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't like to see it as an illness. Mm. Of course, the word they use is disorder. Uh, disorder just means it's out of order, right? So uh, we kind of have to do more work in terms of giving people understanding, yeah. letting them realize that it's okay, you know, uh, life goes on, uh, there is hope and uh, things can be better. Yeah. So yeah, we celebrate that, you know, right. yeah, we celebrate that on 2nd April. Yeah, so we celebrated also with an e-newsletter, Elvin, which I really loved. Yeah. Uh, it's of course the ex-church newsletter, yeah. but the ex-church newsletter was predominantly dedicated uh, to autism awareness. You want to tell us a, a bit about, about that because I really uh, loved every part of the newsletter this time around and I also want you to let people know how they can get a copy of that. Yeah, so uh, maybe just to share a little bit about the newsletter because I've had the chance to be part of a team to plan it, you know, and every time we plan the content and we work quite hard to plan the content. Yes. Uh, we, Very we, well done. We try to think of uh, what are the things that will benefit people. Mm. Uh, what are, because normally when you say church newsletter, you think, oh, church news. But we felt like we needed to be the eyes and ears that will 
present something that you don't normally see on a Sunday yeah. or you don't normally see in your announcements, you know, and we work quite hard to come up with the content. Uh, and it just made sense to do an autism awareness uh, segment mm. uh, in April. You yes. know, when I when we pitched the idea, we were like, oh yeah, it makes sense, you know. Um, also, it come, came out on the 1st of April and then yeah. on 2nd April is really World Autism Awareness Day. Um, so we basically uh, presented our framework uh, and maybe I'll share a little bit about that later. Uh, but if you're interested to, and I always try to encourage people to go and sign up for a newsletter uh, and make sure it doesn't go in their spam. If you're interested, you can go on our website. Mm. Uh, you can also check it out on kenachin.org. Uh, That's mm. your website, Pastor. Mm. Or even x, uh, news.xchurch.org. Mm. So it's all uh, displayed there on our website. But ideally, if you can subscribe to it, that'd be great. Mm. Uh, so uh, so it's yeah. not just ex-church people that can subscribe to it? Yeah, anyone. Anyone okay. can. I mean, uh, yes, it is an ex-church newsletter, but yeah. we share, we don't just share ex-church specific stuff. Yes. I think we share a lot of community updates, uh, what right. AYA is doing as well. Yeah, things of interest to anyone. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember we had one article where we talked about, and this was during the pandemic, we talked about uh, it's okay to, be, to not be okay. Mm. Uh, talking a little bit about mental health. We also did one where I quite like, uh, we gave this idea of like, um, if you want to help someone, you got to help yourself first, you know. Uh, and it talks a little bit about mental health. It talks about how when the emergency in a plane, they will always say, put your... You yeah. put your oxygen mask Plus, first yeah. before you help the other person because if not, you know, sometimes we get into a place of compassion that we will help everybody but we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah. So I, I quite like that uh, good. that issue. So we do come up with issues like that. That's good. Yeah. So I hope that uh, those of you who are watching or listening to us don't miss yeah. this issue. The April issue of the XE newsletter and uh, as Elvin said, you can check us on check us uh, on the website which is just xchurch yes, yes. dot org, uh, dot org uh, uh, or news.xchurch.org news. or even our social media okay. uh, uh, all, it's all on our social media you can find out how you can sign up there okay. so. Uh, so please sign up and especially if you are xchurch partner you're coming to x you're a member please make sure you don't miss it because I think uh, Shirley I'm just looking at Shirley right now if actually sent by, via email also yes, yes, yes. to our partners so um, either subscribe, which is better, or uh, make sure that your email is with us. Uh, if you're a partner of X Church, uh, you don't want to miss it, okay? Uh, especially this issue, but every issue has also been really, really good. Yeah. Now, say something about the podcast, uh, Elvin, because you also just started a podcast. Yes, uh, inspired by Chit Up Show <laughs> and also knowing uh, the way we uh, get information. I mean, so Pastor, I think the journey started uh, for Timmy and uh, the, the, how to say, well, I wouldn't say desire, but the urgency uh, started a few years back on how we can help parents. Mm. And uh, one of the things I've noticed is that as I talk to different ones, uh, people are still very fearful about things. Right. People are still very concerned about people, other people knowing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, I went through my own journey of coming out of like being fearful of people knowing, yeah. labeling my, my child. And the moment I came out of it, I realized that the more I shared, the more I received help. The Good. more I shared, the more I realized that it's not, you know, uh, not shameful. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I've been always thinking about, okay, how do we get information to people? at a safe level that they will not feel offended mm. or that they will be able to receive. Mm. And uh, I mean, learning from Chin Up and also learning from different podcasts, I realized that one of the best ways for people to understand things or catch information is that uh, if they sign up for something that they're interested in, yeah. but you're not directly speaking to them. Yes. You know, instead you are sharing experiences, yeah. you are talking to different You're uh, letting people. them eavesdrop yeah, on you the know, conversation. You're getting different testimonies, uh, you know, uh, and uh, that was quite effective. So I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while now mm. uh, and we just launched it uh, in uh, World Autism Awareness Day. Congratulations. Uh, and uh, I would also want to say that you are the first <laughs> talent. Thank you so much for spending Thank time you with us. Thank you for inviting me. I, I really enjoyed our conversation. It I was, was just listening to, to it the other day. I'm like, wow, this good stuff, you know, yeah. not just Thank for special for needs, but also, I mean, you talked a little bit about shame, yeah. uh, how Jesus despised the shame, yes. you know, and when we despise the shame, we can come out of it and we overcome. That's that was right. very powerful. That's right. That's cool. um, I've really had one or two people who came up to me or text me and said, you know, I was curious about this. I don't know what I said, but listen, I'm so encouraged. So and 
I mean, that was what we wanted to do. Wonderful. We want to encourage people. We want to yeah. encourage parents. Uh, so the podcast is called Calm is Timmy Time. Uh, one of our, uh, one of our uh, colleagues, teammates that was very good at puns, she came out with the idea, calm as in not calm, yeah. but C-A-L-M. Right. But of course, it sounds like calm. Yes. So you can come and listen because it's Timmy Time. Calm, it's Timmy Time. But you can also be calm. Nice. <laughs> Nice. You know, and not have anxiety, and uh, and yeah, you know, we are hoping to do something maybe once in two weeks, once in a week. Well done. Uh, I'm looking forward to the coming episode, uh, which is gonna come out on Tuesday again because we're gonna interview a parent, mm. uh, get their insight, get their, Good. you know, uh, uh, what did they learn, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So, so, so you yeah. done two already, right? Two episodes. Um. So we've done one episode. One. Uh, one was a pilot. It okay. was just for fun. Right. Uh, we interviewed our blue room manager Megan, ah. who's also here in. Yes. You know, this place. Yes. Uh, and it was quite fun to That would have been fun, yeah, Megan especially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. We're, we're just going to see where this goes. You know, I don't really have a plan. I okay. don't really have... It's more like we want to encourage people. And so far, yeah. it's been happening. It's an experiment. Yeah. Uh, but a good experiment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and already, you, you're getting people telling you that they have been touched. Yes. yes. And blessed and, and encouraged by what you have put out. So, uh, well done, Elvin. And uh, I hope, I pray... Uh, that it will just get better and better yeah, yeah. and uh, it will touch many more lives. I think we need a podcast like that. Uh, and um, there are not many in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I think, I don't know, can you count with this one? Well, so far uh, there's two. Only two? Uh, us and uh, one more uh, done by uh, Kita Fam, I think. And okay. I, I, it's really good as well. I would okay. encourage people to go listen to it All as right. well. So good. Uh, but it's good to hear more people doing stuff. You okay. know, I mean, we're not in competition, but we are complementing. Okay. So I think that's quite cool. Yeah. You recently came out with an acronym, uh, and it speaks about the objectives. Uh, I think you might call it a framework. Uh, I call it objectives because you know it also shows you what we want to do. Yeah. Uh, what what we are all about. Yeah. And uh, so you use the word autism. A U T I S M. Yeah. And every letter stands for something, and it actually, especially important to us because it stands for who we are, what we do, yes, uh, yes. what we are about uh, and what we want to achieve. So would you like to take on uh, each letter? Sure. Um, so maybe just to give a, a background, I mean, as we were planning what we can do uh, for uh, people in terms of health, I mean, yep. we can do a lot of things, yep. uh, but I think uh, with the spirit of wanting to do something that other people are not doing so that we can help cover that side uh, of the wall, you would say, uh, it took many, many years to come up with certain objectives that will help us to also frame the way we do things. Right. Yeah. So I think, um, so yeah, so I think with your encouragement also, Pastor, I went, I prayed, uh, and uh, we came up with this uh, word. And I kind of like it because, you know, like how coming back to the word X, Pastor, yes. where uh, God told you that you're going, He's going to change your generation X yeah. to X generation. Right. Uh, I see autism as uh, not just a negative thing, right. but a positive thing. And I'm not saying that I wish that for anybody. Sure. It's just more of like, how do we view the word? Yeah. Uh, and our framework came from that. And I, I do believe it was inspired also uh, by God. Uh, so A stands for acceptance. Mm. Uh, because And that's the first door that needs to be opened. Yes. Because uh, without acceptance and, and uh, without accepting the situation, accepting where you're at, it's very hard for you to progress on into more. Mm. You know, I've spoken to a lot of people and I've seen a lot of people who may find solutions but they have not accepted. Right. And it, it makes it very difficult. Very, right. It makes it very difficult for growth. So yeah. the encouragement I always have is first you got to accept it. you right. got to accept that this is happening yeah. and this is your life now, you know. Sure. So acceptance is A. U is understanding. Mm. I mean, with anything, uh, we need to understand. Uh, and uh, a lot of times people come and will say, hey, you know, I want to help. What do I do? I'll ask them to read a book. Mm. They're like, huh? Should I go for training? I said, yeah, but read a book so they can understand it. Because actually, once you understand, you know what to do. Right. When you understand that a child is like that, or when you understand that this is how they think, you know what to do. Mm. Because we're all human. It's all quite common sense. Mm. But the only reason why we don't know and it seems daunting is because we don't understand. Mm. So U is, stands for understanding. Good. Um, next, the one that I like is T. Mm. Because T stands for team. Mm. And team, not T-I-M, but T-E-A-M. T -E -A -M, yes. Because... We need a team. So right. who's on your team? Is it your leaders? Is it your psychologist? Is it your therapist? Is it your family members? Mm. I mean, sometimes we don't have all the team we want. Like yeah. some of our family members may reject us mm. or sometimes we might be speaking to our leaders that don't understand. It's okay. Mm. 
look for your team. Mm. A lot of parents that go on this journey feel that they are alone. Mm. And I always want to tell them that you're not alone. You right. have a team. You need to know that you have a team. So mm. find your team. It could be other parents. Mm. You know, uh, build your team. You know, so T stands for team. Good. Uh, I stands for information. Um, and uh, information is important because we need to know our options. Uh, and we realize that that's something that, and again, we won't count ourselves an expert. I, I, you know, we've never, we didn't come up with this society to say we are going to be the information highway, but, mm. but we can help make connections. Mm. We can help point you to the right direction. Mm. Um, one of the other organizations that I really respect that have been doing a lot for uh, this area and also more is Malaysian Care. Mm. They have a lot of information, but a lot of people don't know that they're around. Right. You know, they actually have an online database of all the therapies and help that you mm -hmm. can look for. This is Malaysian care, right? Malaysian yeah, care. So we already job. have some of these things. So yeah. I realized that when you have the right information or when you have enough information, then you know what to do. So mm. it, I stands for in, mm. information. Um, S is interesting because, uh, and it kind of um, is derived a little bit from my own life because as I'm thinking about um, taking care of an individual or child with special needs, I think about the resources that I need. Mm. And S stands for spirit. Mm. And I realized that my faith and my values really helped me. Mm. Um, one of the topics we talked about in our podcast, Pastor, was about belief. Mm. You know, and, uh, you know, first I had people believing for me. Mm. And then later I believe. Right. Uh, so the, the faith element really helped me in this mm. journey. You know, and my son is doing very well now, mm. thanks to me being transformed mm. uh, and your values as well mm. you know uh, I think parents need to know that you're not just solving a problem yeah. your values and your faith will help you to persevere because there will be down days mm. there will be times that you'll feel discouraged you know um, I, I'm very aware that even though things are moving smoothly now mm. that at different milestones or different life milestones I will face challenges mm. you know um, my wife and me one of the interesting things we're we doing we're trying to there's this show on Netflix called Love on the Spectrum. Mm. You, you don't normally think that those with autism will fall in love. Mm. But when you watch that show, you will understand right. that they can fall in love. Right. And it's very interesting how they do sure. certain things. And we are training ourselves as parents because one day my son is going to come up to me and say, Daddy, I like this girl. Mm. And I'm like, how am I going to do it? It's going to be very different mm. from a, a neurotypical child. Mm. So uh, having the right faith, having the right spirit and values will help you. Wow. And of course, I talk about my wife. Uh, marriage mm. uh, is very important. Right. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, um, well, I know, and you know, when we put this point, I think someone asked me before, how about single parents? Mm. I said, yes, single parents who are taking care of their child is also important. But the child came into this world because there was a mother and father. So when we talk about marriage, we're not just talking about the state of the marriage, but we're talking about mom and dad. Mm. And uh, I recognize that... Uh, Doing it alone is difficult, yeah. but the marriage is so important for the uh, growth of the child. Right. So that is something that I realize a lot of people don't realize. They think just sending to therapy and sending this will help. But actually, one of the things that I've learned is that my home environment really impacted my child. Mm. And I think that that's a very important point for us to take note of. I need to take care of myself. If I'm stressed out as a parent, how am I going to help my child? Yeah. If it's crazy for me, yeah. I'm going to release that to my child. Yeah. So, it can be a real stress on the marriage. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and cause it to uh, break uh, slowly but surely. Yeah. And the more it breaks, the harder it gets yeah. for everyone. Uh, and so uh, investing into strengthening of uh, people's marriages uh, is also investing into the child. So very, very good. I love it. Uh, I see... Uh, all of it uh, as a possibility. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it's practical. Acceptance, understanding, team, uh, information, uh, spirit or values and marriage uh, is, uh, you know, so, so important. Uh, and uh, I'm very thankful that uh, God has yeah. led uh, Timmy, the organization, uh, to, you know, uh, be so clear uh, in uh, what you stand for and what yeah. you want to do as a support uh, to these families. Finally, uh, Elvin, uh, before we close uh, our segment one of Chin Up Show today, uh, you have a conference uh, coming up, or Timmy has a conference coming up. Tell, tell us a little bit more. Tell us when, tell us how to sign up. 
Yeah, so uh, we're going to be running our second time running uh, the Timi Autism Conference. Mm. Uh, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's happening on the 27th of July. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're going to have it uh, somewhere in Sobang. I mean, we still have not gotten the venue yet. Mm. Uh, and uh, if you want to sign up, we're going to start sign-ups in the middle of April. Okay. So just stay tuned. Check out our social media, our website and find out more. I think we'll also share it in church so that people right. know about it. Uh, and it's going to be exciting because uh, we're going to have quite a few goodies uh, for the parents. Nice. Uh, you know, uh, panel speakers, some workshops, you know. And I think the last time we did it, a lot of parents were very blessed yeah. because they got more than what they expected. You know, mm. so look out for that. Uh, it's going to happen soon and it will come to you soon. Uh, and maybe just a prayer point is that we're looking for a venue. Mm. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, a certain a school or a school uh, that I'm going to approach will sponsor us. Right. So maybe you can just pray along with us for the venue. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you know, judging from the first conference uh, that Timmy did last year, uh, which was a uh, success, uh, I have no doubt uh, that this conference this year, 27th of July, do you say that? Yeah, 27th of July. 27th of July. Uh, so mark that uh, date down on your calendar. You don't want to miss this. You know, we are surrounded uh, with this issue and it's a growing, increasing uh, uh, aspect yeah. uh, in our lives now. Uh, it's something that we shouldn't avoid, something that we shouldn't, you know, just sweep under the carpet. Uh, these are very precious people, uh, God's children, even though they have special needs and, uh, you know, they might uh, be a little bit different in the way uh, they do things and say things, uh, but they're human beings uh, worthy of love uh, and uh, we want to be uh, God's instruments of blessing yeah. uh, to them. Uh, they might be found in our schools, they might be found in our neighborhood, yeah. they might be found in our offices uh, and in our daily lives uh, and increasingly so. So even if you do not yet have a, a, a close a family member or a friend who is in that spectrum, uh, it doesn't uh, matter because I think anyone who signs up for this coming conference or for any conference that uh, Timmy puts out will definitely gain yeah, a lot yeah. uh, in equipping yourself uh, yeah. with that knowledge uh, that you need so that you can make this world a better place yeah. for everyone. So, Elvin, thank you again uh, for coming on the Chin Up Show. Thank you for having me, Pastor. It's a privilege. All right. Usually, Elvin is uh, behind uh, the camera uh, because he's also uh, the director uh, for Chin Up Show but this time around I've put him in front of the camera because he has got so much to say uh, and I thank you for what you're doing and I thank you for the team as well uh, the team is doing great uh, stuff uh, in and through Timmy so that's the end of uh, segment 1 of Chin Up Show episode number 21 and I'll come back uh, to you uh, in our segment 2 to continue the series on understanding youth and revisioning youth ministry. See you soon. segment two of chin up show this is episode number 21 and in our first segment we were able to interview Alvin King uh, who leads uh, the TV organization that uh, we started to reach out and help support children with special needs and their parents and families um, as you know if you've been following Chin Up Show for the last few weeks, we had embarked on a series uh, that's entitled Understanding Youth and Revisioning Youth Ministry. This is a really important topic uh, as I travel around Malaysia and even the world. Uh, I find that many pastors, senior pastors, senior leadership are always uh, having on their minds and even on their lips the question 
of how they can do youth ministry better. Uh, you know, there is this challenge, right, that most people agree that they have, which is a generation gap. They don't understand the young people of today. They don't know, they don't know how to reach them. And so, by the grace of God, having been a part of uh, ministry to young people for the last 30 years, God has had uh, to, you know, uh, tell me things and show me things and teach me things uh, about youth ministry, no matter what, uh, you know, generation it is, uh, no matter uh, what era it is, uh, you know, uh, we have, by the grace of God, uh, have needed, it was a necessity uh, to remain relevant and on the cutting edge uh, with uh, this ministry uh, to young people. So um, it is uh, a great joy to me to be able to dedicate the Chin Up Show uh, to help uh, parents and pastors uh, and leaders who are interested in reaching young people to understand a little bit more uh, of uh, how to and why and uh, you know, what, uh, maybe even when and where, uh, what it is uh, that works uh, with uh, young people today uh, in reaching them uh, for uh, good and for God. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, seven points uh, in this segment, segment two, which is also going to be our final segment for today. Uh, I'm going to share with you seven points of what it is that God had put on my heart uh, and, the, and the overarching thought is this. And I think, uh, as I say it, it will uh, resonate with a lot of you out there. Uh, my overarching vision for teens slash youth in my church plant is to see them embracing their parents' church as their own. Let me repeat. My overarching vision for teens and or youth in my church plant, in my church, my church plant, is to see them embracing their parents' church as their own. Why do I say this? It's because uh, many churches have found themselves coming to a place where uh, because of, you know, most of them have a separate youth ministry, a separate youth group, a separate youth service even, and what many have experienced is that the young people have come to a place whereby uh, they like going to their own youth group, youth ministry, youth service, but they have a detachment now uh, from the main service. So they call it my parent service. So uh, unknowingly and unintentionally, there's now a segregation and a separation between a youth service and a adult service and a term where young people are saying, that my parent service. Uh, the parents uh, uh, that they have uh, that go to these services, so it becomes an adult service. And in uh, other words, and they might not be saying it, it's a service that's different from their own, a service that's more uh, catered and tailored to the adults, and therefore, quote-unquote, it's a boring service. And I, I don't want to go to that service. I don't want, I don't want to join my parents in that service. And so uh, the sad thing about this, while some people might say, oh, it's natural, uh, it's also the cause of dividing the church. And many of us here understand that the teens and the youth will also become adults. Uh, and they will be lost because the youth service will no longer be relevant for them because now they're young adults and their young families, but yet they have never been encouraged to inculcate uh, a desire to uh, want to be part of, quote-unquote, the adult service or the parent service. Uh, so we don't want that terminology uh, to continue in the church. We don't want to subscribe to that kind of mindset where you are you and I am I, uh, and it's me and you and not us. Uh, we want to build a us church, a we church, a family church. We want our young people to be able to say at the end of the day, this is my church too. It is my present and I am its future. 
So this is really the mission uh, and the hope uh, that God has put on my heart, both for my church, Acts Church, as well as any church that would ask me, what would the vision be? What should the vision be for us in our church as far as young people are concerned? We want our young people to be able to say, this is my church too. It's not just my parents' church, it's also my church. I am the church present. Okay, that means this church, this church that I used to call my parents' church, this is my present and I am its future. Okay, not separated, but one church. All right, uh, the dream is to be able to see and hear our young people say that. This church, the one that I call my parents' church, is my present. I'm okay being here now. I'm okay serving here now. I'm okay going to church. This church is my present, my today. It's not just my tomorrow, it's my today. And because I'm part of the today church, today's church will have a future because I am also its future. Isn't that a great thing to come to? Let's do that. So the question is, how do I get there? What do I need to do today to be able to encourage young people to be a part of the today church? Uh, don't say it's the parents' church. Say it's my church as well, and I am its present, and it is, uh, you know, uh, 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 it is my present. Sorry, I should say, it is my present, and I am its future. How do we get there? I've got seven points for you. Number one, number one. If you are the church planter, if you are the pastor, if you are the leader, say this. Let this be your mantra, your mission. Number one, as a church planter, say this. I want to know every teen or youth in my church plant. Even if it's just their names. And I want to help them know me. Too many times young people go to a church that the leaders, you know, sort of unashamedly uh, not know their names. Uh, and I think we should have a little bit of shame when we don't know the names of our young people in our church. Uh, I don't know, la, that boy. Uh, oh, is Michael and Cynthia's son, is it? Oh, uh, that girl. Oh, that girl, I don't know her name, la, uh, but she's the daughter or the granddaughter of Akao and Amoy, is it? So we only know the parents and the grandparents' name and the names of the young people are not important to us. Don't make that happen. Don't let that happen. Let the young people feel that they are important. And how? Point number one, know their names, uncle and aunties. Know their name, uh, pastors and, and, and leaders and elders. Know their names. Say that, yeah, of course I must know your name because you are part of my church, right? But not only that, don't stop there. Help them know you. I am Kenneth. And I like you. And I thank God that you're part of this church. And you are the future of this church. And I want you to serve in this church. Uh, so I want to know you and you know me. So I'm going to call you by name and you can call me by my name. It's, o it's okay. We are friends here. All right? Build that friendship just by knowing each other's name. Number one. Number two, as a church plant coordinator or as an elder, as a pastor of this church, I want to say this. I want to know that every one of the young people are accounted for. They are accounted for. I know. How many are there? How many young people are in ex quota Kamuning, for example? Okay, so 60 of them, 50 of them, 40 of them, 22 of them. And I know each one by name. They are all accounted for. All right? They are cared for. I know that Olivia is being cared for by Rochelle. I know uh, that uh, Evelyn is being cared for by Rochelle. I know uh, that uh, Chris is being cared for by Daniel. I know who is taking care of Jaden. I know who is taking care uh, of uh, Carson. I know which homes they go to. I know that they are going to homes. I know which school they come from and uh, who is watching over them. Uh, so account for them, care for them, and make sure that they are being discipled. Who is discipling them? Who is the, their discipler? Don't just you know, oh, I know, I see that person running around. Uh, I'm not sure about the name. I'm not sure whether they're taken care of. I'm not sure whether they're being discipled. 
Don't let that happen. Okay, every teenager and every youth in our church must be accounted for. And I'm telling you, you know why we count them? Because they count. Is, do you like that sentence? We count them because they count. You must make sure that your young people count in your church. Number three, as a leader, as an elder, as a pastor of this church, you want to say, I want to see each and every one of them growing in worship and the word especially. Okay, you want to see every week your young people worshipping God. You know, I love taking photos of our young people lifting up their hands, eyes closed, worshipping the Lord. Because that is an experience, a real true experience that they need with God. And when they know how to worship, I'm telling you right now, they will have an experience and an encounter with God that will take them deeper and they will take them higher and further with God. Teach them how to worship. Okay, lead them, role model for them how it is to worship the Lord, okay? And the second W, there's two W's especially that's important, worship and the word, okay? All five W's are important. If you want to know the five W's, I'll give it to you right now. It's worship, it's word, it's warmth, it's works and it's witness. But I want to especially tell you leaders to invest in making sure that your young people are in worship, okay? Uh, uh, help them with the songs, help them with the music, help them get into the zone, all right? Teach them that worship is not just about fast, good music, about a full band, about the drummer playing drums, you know, uh, 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 as loudly as he can. It's not about, you know, being cool. It's about worship unto the Lord, that even one guitar is enough because the best worship instrument is our voices and our hearts. God looks at the heart. He doesn't look at how big the band is or whether there's sound and lights and all. God is not interested. Teach them the heart of worship. Get your young people into the heart of worship and let them worship the Lord uh, 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 no matter what it is that they have or don't have. And get them into the Word. I remember one of our leaders here in Exco you know, taught them to take notes. And so today, almost all our young people in Exco have, uh, you have know, uh, 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 a notepad, uh, a piece of paper, whatever it is, a pencil, a pen, or maybe a, a smart tab and they're taking notes, and our leaders are role modeling to them uh, that taking notes are important. So teach them how important getting serious with the word is because you know when they get into the word, the word will get into them. Number four, as a leader, I want to say, I want to see each and every one of these young people finding their place. Yes. We want our young people to find their place if they're ever going to say that this is also my church, not just my parents' church, but this is also my church. You want to make sure that every young person has a place. Let them find their place. Help them to find their place. Talk to them about it. Interview them about it. Tell them what can you do. You know, don't just ask them to arrange chairs and sweep the floor and clean the toilets. You know, they can do that, but you know, make sure that uh, you, know, you know their talents, you know their giftings. Yeah, get to know them a little bit more. Take them out for Mama. Take them out for Tetare. You know, take them out for McDonald's. Get to know them a little bit more. Oh, this person sings well. Oh, this person does uh, uh, media well. Oh, this person can play the guitar well. Oh, this person, you know, uh, uh, can lead uh, in, in children's church well. Uh, whatever it is, right? Let them find their place and purpose. And to start serving in the church. Don't just say, oh, you know, you have a youth group, go serve in your youth group. No, the most beautiful picture is to see our young people serving in the main service. Okay? Maybe they got a beautiful smile, a good warm handshake. Let them be an usher. Okay? Let them dress well. If they can't find money for a good uh, shirt or tie or, or, or suit, you know, help them with it. Okay? Say, I, let me invest in a nice suit for you. Let me invest in a nice tie for you. Let me invest in a nice shirt, long sleeve shirt. Young people, a lot of young people don't have long sleeve shirt today. But if that's how your church does it, to dress well for ushering, you know, invest in them. Let the young person know, wow, you know, I'm not just forcing you to get your own shirt. I will bless you with a shirt. And you know, wow, a nice shirt. Why? Because my leaders believe in me. My leaders want me to uh, find a place and a purpose and to serve. Uh, so invest in them. Invest in them. Number five. I want to see each and every one of them comfortable with the adults. Whoa, this is important. And even caring for them. Now, in many of our churches, teens are not comfortable with adults. You know, adults don't open themselves up to teens. 
Adults don't even spend time with it. Adults just spend time talking to other adults, eating with other adults. But I think if you really want your teenager and your young person to say, this is my church too, then they must have an intermingling with the adults. They must show some interest in the adults. Uh, and to be able to get there, uh, you know, the adults must show interest in the young person. So that's point number six. I want to see our adults being comfortable with our teens. And a lot of adults are also not comfortable with teens. I uh, let the teens play on their own. Let them have fun on their own. Let them have their own Wi-Fi and selfie. Let them have their own whatever, right? No. Yes, they can still have their own time. You know, five, ten minutes on their own. But adults, we need to start taking interest in our teens. Start to talk to them. Start to spend time with them. Start to take them out. Start to have lunches with them. You know, and when you do go for lunch, don't the adults just hang out by themselves and then you prepare a teens table somewhere, a youth table. No. Yeah, you can also still have that. But why don't one or two or three adults stand up from the table after about 20 minutes and walk to the other table and sit with them and, you know, uh, talk to them and eat with them and take your cup of your drink uh, along so that you can go to the other table and uh, the teenager will go, wow, you know, an adult is coming to join us uh, with his cup, you know, because he plans not just to say hello, he plans to sit with us and have a drink with us uh, uh, and, and talk to us. Uh, and so the way teens are going to be comfortable with adults is when adults are comfortable with teens and to start caring for each other, all right, and not just, uh, 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 you know, be segregated by age groups and, 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 and to only look at your own age group and, and, and be comfortable talking to only your age group. We've got to break that. Uh, we've got to begin to show care. All right? Adults, be ready and willing to invest into our young people. Okay? Uh, and uh, one of the best, greatest investment is your time. Not just money. Huh? I know a lot of adults go like, ah, give them allowance uh, here, $10, $20, $50, you know, uh, $100. Uh, go, go far away, go buy your ice cream, you know, go far away, go play far away, don't disturb me, don't do that. That's, that's how you're going to cause there to be a wider generation gap uh, and you're going to start breaking, uh, you know, uh, the relationship that should be uh, to make a healthy church. Okay, last point uh, before we draw to a close. Point number seven, I want to see as a leader, again, as an elder, a pastor, a church plant coordinator, you want to say this, I want to see our teens and youths genuinely interested and passionately excited to help each other root down and reach out to the underprivileged, unchurched and unsaved. Now, one of the best ways to have young people root down is to have young people reaching young people. This is a beautiful strategy, okay? But the young people have got to be included in the adult plan or the adult vision of seeing your church become like that, become a place that's friendly to young people, okay? Become a place that young people want to come to, okay? And the, the more mature young people in your church can be your ally, can be your partner, can be your agent of change, okay? Mobilize the more mature young people in your midst to reach their own age group, to show them that this is the way, that it's fun to root down in this church, that is wonderful. We grow in this church. You know, we get deeper with God. We get deeper with each other. We get to, you know, fellowship with the adults and we gain so much, so much experience, so much information can be downloaded when we spend time with adults. We can have our questions answered. Our worries, you know, uh, uh, and fears uh, will, be, will be dissipated because, you know, adults that we, we fellowship with can speak into these areas because they have gone before us. And so you as a young person, as a young leader, can encourage your young generation to, uh, you know, to open themselves up uh, to this plan that the church has, okay? And to work together as even a youth group to reach out to uh, those who are less privileged, the unchurched and the unsafe young people that are out there. Uh, and together we can do this as a church. Both the adults and the young people can go out together and make a difference in the world outside, all right? Uh, partnering and partnership is really, really important. So once again, I started with getting to know your young people, getting to know their names and involving them and making this church their church too, 
Very, very important. If you want your young people to say, this is also my church. It does not just belong to my parents. And together we own this church. And together we are part of this church today. And we are also part of this church tomorrow. Young people will grow up. And once they get comfortable with the church that is, you know, they will continue to be in this church for many, many more decades to come. And they will teach their young people to do the same. Amen. So let's build God a strong, united family church. The church has always been about family. If you look into the story of Jesus, you know, as a family, they went to Jerusalem. As a family, they came back. As a family, they went home. As a family, they served. You know, in the Bible, we very rarely see uh, segregated ministries. I believe the plan and the will of God is for us to be one. Not comparing one with the other, not segregating ourselves, not separating ourselves, not competing with one another. That's very, very important. Okay, not saying their music is lousy, our music is better, you know, we are cooler, they are boring. Don't let the enemy get us there. Okay, let's work as one. All right, so this is all the time we have left for uh, today. Uh, next week, I'm going to continue uh, talking about, you know, uh, making our ministries and our churches uh, more and more uh, uh, youth-friendly, and we're going to talk more, and I think I have probably material uh, to uh, continue on this topic of understanding youth and uh, revisioning youth ministry for at least another three to four more uh, chin-up shows, and then after that, uh, we will close uh, this topic and go on to other topics that's also very, very important to us. So stay tuned, and thank you for your support uh, to the chin-up show. This is episode number 21, and I am so glad that all of you uh, could join us. Now, uh, you could find us on all the major platforms. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe, give us a like, and even leave us a comment. Until the next time, on behalf of my team and I, the Lord bless you. Have a great weekend ahead and see you next time. Take care.